Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be giving you guys lots of tips and I'm gonna be going through how I use colored pencils and watercolors together to create a portrait. So you can see here the portrait that I'm going to be working on and I combined a realistic style and a very loose expressive style both within this portrait. So I'm also gonna be giving you some tips on how you can mix different styles into your painting. As always, the list of materials that I'm using are in the description if you want to check any of them out. But let's get straight on to the tutorial. So once I had my sketch outline down on the paper, I always like to start off by painting the skin when I'm doing a portrait. And I start off by mixing out the skin tone colours that I'm going to need. I'm mixing up two colours to start off with, a shadowed colour and then a lighter version of that same colour with a bit more water mixed in to get a lighter value. And when I'm mixing skin tone colours, I mainly use red, yellow ochre and brown. But for this one, you may have seen that I also mixed in purples and darker blues to create more of a purpley undertone like you'll see in the reference. Then I take that lighter colour, that lighter wash that I mixed up and I just apply that all over the skin. And then whilst that layer is still wet, I go in with the shadowed colour and I just simply place that where I can see all of the shadows on the skin in the reference. So at the moment I'm just working with those two colours that I mixed together. And it's really important that you do go in and add in all of these shadows whilst that first wash of colour is still wet because what we're trying to use is the wet on wet technique for this, which basically means you want your surface of the skin to still be wet whilst you're adding in those shadows so that it nicely bleeds out and so that you don't get any harsh edges. Then once I'd worked with those two colours, I mixed up more of a purpley grey tone, so I added more purple into that skin tone. And I'm using this to add some of those darker shadows around the eyes and around the nose. When I work with skin, I like to do it in layers. So once you've done this step, wait for that layer to dry. And then go in with a clean wet brush and pre-wet the whole of the skin again so that we can add more skin tones, build up more colours and add in more shadows and still get it to bleed into each other and not have any harsh edges. Once again, I just mixed up more of that exact same skin tone while I tried to get it as exact as I could and I'm just building up more shadows. I like to start off fairly light and then as I build up more layers, I get darker and darker to try and keep it as accurate to the reference as possible. I don't want to go in too dark too fast and then realise that I've gone in too dark and I've gone over all of the highlights. I also make sure that I'm painting the neck darker than the face and in a lot of references you'll see that the, the neck is a darker value than the face and that's a common mistake that I see beginners making any medium is doing the neck the same sort of value as the face when it's clearly darker in the reference image. So I'm going in now and I'm adding some shadows around the side of her face. That tends to be where there's more shadows around the side of the face, the sides of the nose and underneath the nose and also around the chin and the mouth area. And when on your painting skin, it's not necessarily about mixing up tons of different colours. It's about building it up in layers and make sure you're doing this wet on wet technique so that everything stays really nice and smooth. Or if you don't like using the wet and wet technique, make sure that you're using a nice clean wet brush to then blend out the edges. Once again, I wanted to wait for that layer to dry, but if you're in a bit of a rush, you can use a hairdryer just like I did there. I recommend using it on a fairly warm setting, not too hot, otherwise it will burn the paper though. Another key thing when painting skin is to make sure that you're glazing different hues and colours into the skin to make it look healthy and realistic. So I've mixed up more of a yellow based skin tone and if you get the reference up, like I said it will be linked in the description, you'll see that there's certain areas of the shadows in her skin that had a much more of a greenish yellowish undertone. So as well as building up the main sort of base of the skin and building up those shadows which were mainly pink toned it's also important to get in the glazes of other colors that you can see in the skin and as you can see i'm always keeping the paper wet at all times whilst working on these layers so that everything does softly bleed out that's how you get smooth skin so i'm also working on adding some pink some brighter more vibrant pink to the cheeks 
to give more of a blushed look and a healthy glow to the cheeks. Now before we move on to the next step, if you guys want to improve your drawing and painting skills and be the best you can be, then over on my Patreon I have got over 300 real time tutorials all with voiceover so you can follow along with me every step of the way and learn all of my drawing and painting techniques. With each tutorial I provide the reference image, the sketch outline and a full materials list so that you really can follow along with me and I don't just have them for watercolours, I also have them for charcoal, coloured pencil, pastels, markers, loads of different sort of mediums so I recommend checking that out, a link will be in the description. Now once you've done the skin, wait for that to dry before you work on the details otherwise it might bleed out everywhere. For example if you're doing the eyes like I'm doing and you've left the skin wet then all of that dark shading for the eyes could just bleed into the skin. So wait for it to dry before you do this next step. But once I've worked on the skin I always then like to move on to work on the details. So as you can see I'm using a brown mixed with a bit of black to make it a bit darker and I'm just using this to start to get in the main shadows for the facial features. I started off by getting in the basic shape of where the eyebrows were, adding in a few individual brush strokes to give the look of individual eyebrow hairs. I also got in the eyes and now I'm working on the nose. The darkest part for the nose is really the nostrils and underneath the nose. I didn't add too much detail to the eyes, I just sort of added in that darker upper lash line at the pupil and some darker parts of the iris and a few eyelashes. And then for the lips, I mixed up a pinkish red tone with a bit of purple in it and I'm just using that to block in the skin and make sure that you create a dark line in the centre because that's going to have a bit more shadow. So once I got in the basics for the facial features, I then realised that the skin needed to be a bit darker and you may notice that. So you can always go in and wet the skin again and just add in a few more shadows. Now with the facial features, they do look pretty finished, but when I do this technique, it doesn't always look like this. It's okay if the eyes and the nose and the mouth don't look realistic. We're going to be doing a lot of work with the coloured pencils for those areas. So don't worry if not everything looks perfect in this first sort of layer. Now let's move on to the hair. I really wanted to do a cool loose expressive style to the hair so I just tried to keep everything super messy. I did add in a very light yellowy tone and the way I got that blonde colour was just by mixing in yellow ochre with a bit of brown and then a lot of water and I just added that all over the hair and then went in with these darker browns to get in the basic shadows. To make it look loose and expressive, I'm adding in some splatters and I will go in and add drops of water as well to give a cauliflower effect. Even though you're doing a loose expressive style, it's still important to get your shadows in the right place and to add in some texture like individual strokes to give the look of hair and the direction the hair's going in. And it was just those splatters and those water drops that give the majority of this expressive look to the hair. So let's move on to the coloured pencil step now and this is what really brings everything together. So I'm starting off by using the white pencil and I go throughout the portrait and start off by identifying areas that need to go a bit lighter. So I normally look at the skin first and pick out the brightest areas on the skin. I also see if I want to saturate any of the colours like I did on the cheeks and then finally I go in and I see whether I want to add any shadows or darken up the shadows a bit more. With this particular portrait she also had freckles and I knew that they would be a lot easier to get in with coloured pencils compared to watercolours. So I didn't do them with watercolours, instead I went in with a lighter orange and then a brown to add in a few dots to give some natural looking freckles. And then I move back on to adding some more shadows around the sides of the nose and anywhere that I just don't feel I got dark enough with the watercolours. I also use coloured pencils to mainly add detail and definition to the features. For example, adding in some more eyelashes, you can add in individual eyebrow hairs and stuff like that. 
But really that is all that I do with the colored pencils. It's mainly for definition and adding in detail and also making sure the values are correct, getting those shadows dark enough. Now one problem that you may run into is that you may find that your shading with colored pencils is looking a bit grainy. So to make it a lot smoother, I like to take a slightly lighter colored pencil. Here I'm using a beige pencil and I just go in the sort of opposite direction to what I added in that first layer of shading or I go in little circular motions and this helps to just soften all of that shading out and you don't need to apply a lot of pressure at all with this. I finally go in my black pencil and just get in those darkest shadows and I finish off by adding in some even brighter highlights using a white gel pen and some details in the hair. But that's really how I go about using colour pencils with watercolours to do my portraits. I've got a few other videos on painting portraits with watercolours so I will leave links to them in the description and as cards. Also, if you want to follow along with more of my artworks, you can follow me on Instagram at Kirsty's Art. And I've also started a new vegan Instagram account where I give lots of food recipes. So if you're vegan, feel free to check that out. Or even if you're not vegan, you can still learn how to incorporate more veggies into your diet and create some cool, healthy recipes. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here. And even tick that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.